In today's video, we're going to look back at the progress we've made on our scene so far and do a brief recap of each of the topics and principles we've covered in this series. And then we're going to talk about what's next for the series and go over the topics we're going to cover in the next few weeks and months, so be sure to stick around for that. When looking at the scene now, it's hard to believe that we started with a completely empty map file just three months ago. But before we even made that map, I talked about how important it is to do the foundational steps of finding reference images and identifying the key elements that make up the environment you want to create. Without those steps, you're just making things up as you go along, which is never a good idea. Then we jumped into making a landscape. I went over all of the settings for setting up an efficient landscape uh, with a discussion of landscape components, sections, and quads. I also showed how to increase the density of the landscape triangles near the player for more detail and reduce it further away for better performance. Then we looked at the tools for sculpting the landscape and I created our simple mountain stream shape by raising and lowering the terrain. After sculpting the shape of the landscape, we needed to create the landscape materials. I started that process by showing a technique for packing all of the texture data for the landscape material into just two textures, the CR and the NOH texture. We used Substance Designer or Photoshop to do this packing. We created a material function for unpacking the data in the material in Unreal. Using just two textures for each material is important because each texture sample has a cost, so our materials will run faster on the GPU if they used fewer texture samples. Next, we created each of our individual landscape materials and combined them together into a single material that we can paint onto the landscape. We applied the material and then spent some time painting the various materials onto the landscape. I started by blocking in large areas of material and then we went back in and did some more detail material blending. With the landscape materials painted, we noticed that the tiling of the materials was pretty ugly looking, so then we talked about four methods for breaking up the tiling. After applying these, the result was much more natural looking landscape without the distraction of all of the repeating patterns. To improve the detail shape of our landscape materials beyond simple normal mapping, we then added tessellation and displacement using the height data from our materials. These techniques increase the triangle count significantly, so we have to be sure and be careful uh, to do it as only close to the player. And we also have to tune things carefully so we're only getting the amount of tessellation that we really need and no extra. With our landscape sculpted and painted with materials, we then found a set of rocks and tree assets from the Megascans library and from the free assets available on the Unreal Marketplace. For the smaller rocks, we use Unreal's foliage paint tool to apply the assets to the landscape using the brush interface. This allows us to put down a large number of rocks quickly. Because there are so many of them, we have to be careful to set them up so that they cull out at a distance. We place the trees by hand so that we can have precise control over their placement and rotation. And we give each tree a slight scale and rotation so it's less obvious that we're using the same tree models multiple times. Next, we add larger rocks, fallen trees, ferns and undergrowth, as well as swamp grass to the scene. These elements really bring our scene to life and make it look more and more like the reference images that we've been using. At this point, we're ready to add water. We create a custom stream water shader with foam, refraction, and normal map scrolling. And we use a flow mapping technique to make the stream flow faster in the middle and slower on the edges. We apply the stream water material to flat planes and place them in the map at each level of the stream. 
We improve the appearance of the water by adding wetness decals to make the landscape and rocks near the water look wet. And we also add caustics decals to mimic the effect of sunlight being refracted by the water surface and focused on the bottom of the stream in interesting animated patterns. To improve the water even more, we add splashes, foam, waterfalls, and other water particle effects to the scene that were created by Tom Harl from the T. Harl VFX YouTube channel. Be sure to check out Tom's channel for his series on how those VFX were created. For the final touches in our scene, we polish the lighting and the reflections, and we add fog and light shafts for more dramatic looking sunlight. And now we have a pretty cool looking scene. So the question is, where are we going from here? What are we gonna cover next? Well, to describe the next set of topics we're gonna cover, I have one word, proceduralism. Pretty much everything we've done so far has been handcrafted. We hand sculpted our landscape height, we hand painted our landscape materials, we hand placed our rocks, trees, and logs, and we set up our water planes and added water particle effects all by hand. These methods give us the maximum amount of control over how things are placed, but they're also really labor intensive. Proceduralism means we define a set of rules and then the computer follows those rules along with the data available to create the environment for us. So next week, we're gonna start by looking at methods for generating terrain, including importing height maps from real world height data captured by satellites and LIDAR scans instead of hand painting it. In the following weeks, we're gonna create a landscape auto material where the various material types are applied based on the landscape height and slope instead of hand painting. We'll also cover applying foliage and rocks automatically based on the landscape material. And finally, we'll cover using the new Unreal water system that was introduced in Unreal 4.26. Each of these systems uses proceduralism to automate the process of world creation. So we're able to create environments more quickly and with less effort. So if you're interested in these topics, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss this next set of videos. The downsides to proceduralism are that we give up a bit of control over the exact shape and placement of assets, and we have to be very careful to tune the rules that control how things are generated so that we don't end up with a big mess. Ideally, you wanna create systems that auto-generate the initial results and then allow the user to fine tune things by hand in areas where it's required. So for each of the steps that we cover in the next series of videos, I'll show you how that can be done. So that's our video for today. I'm excited to work through all these topics in the coming weeks with you guys, and I hope that you're looking forward to them as well. So I'll see you next week where we'll go over creating and importing height map data.